Hello class. Today we're going to talk about the um, image analysis of SI joints. Image analysis guidelines state that the medial, median sacral crest should be aligned with the symphysis pubis. The sacrum is at equal distance from the lateral wall of the pelvic brim on both sides. SI joints are demonstrated without for shortening. Sacrum is elongated. The uh, pubic symphysis superimposes the fifth sacral segment. The long axis of the median sacral crest is aligned with the long axis of the collimated field. The second sacral segment is at the center of the exposure field. And the SI joints in the first through fourth sacral segments are all included within the exposure field. This image here demonstrates um, an AP axial SI joint projection with accurate posi uh, positioning. You can see that your median um, sacral crest here, I'm not good at drawing a straight line, am I today, is in line with the pubic symphysis. So we know that there's no rotation here. Um, also, the sacrum is demonstrated elongated. Um, the fifth segment down here is um, superimposed by the pubic symphysis. Um, so some of these um, image analysis guidelines are um, a bit more extensive than what Merrill's provides for you. But again, um, these are just some guidelines to help you um, along the way while you're do, create, doing your own image analysis out in the field. In this segment here, I have listed the um, AP axial SI joint um, guidelines that we just um, went over. So let's um, talk about angulation and its relationship to this AP axial projection. In the case that you take the resultant image and um, you go to examine it, um, this is demonstrating um, insufficient cephalic um, central ray angulation. In this case, if an AP axial SI joint projection is taken, which if you can recall that our central ray should be angulated 30 degrees for a male and 35 for a female. However, if that angulation is perpendicular or is um, um, less than the suggested angulation, cephalic angulation, then the SI joints and the first through third sacral segments will be demonstrated as foreshortened and the um, uh, pubic symphysis is demonstrated inferior to the fifth sacral segment. So you can see in this image right um, from the beginning here that you are starting to visualize the coccyx here. Your fifth sacral segment is here above the pubic symphysis here. So we are insufficiently um, angled. So a repeat would be necessary and we would need to um, increase our angulation to um, um, uh, appropriately uh, perform the pr er, projection. Now, in a uh, projection with uh, excessive cephalic central ray angulation, um, the sacrum and the SI joint will be uh, demonstrated as excessively elongated. 
Um, and the uh, symphysis pubis will be superimposed over more than only the fifth um, sacral segment. So when you're looking at this image, we can see we've got way too much annulation here. Um, the pubic symphysis is way over top, like here over top the sacral segment, almost the midpoint of um, the sacrum. So I would say it's around mm, the third, almost up to the sec second sacral segment. Um, so this is excessive cephalic central ray angulation. Again, you would just have to readjust that central ray angulation to um, uh, obtain the appropriate projection. So let's look at this first, or uh, this AP axial SI joint practice analysis. The first thing I ask myself is all my anatomy on the image. Yes, the anatomy is on the image. However, am I appropriately positioned and am I, uh, do I have an appropriate um, central ray in this AP axial SI joint? Am I demonstrating the anatomy um, in accordance with image analysis guidelines? No. And the reason why we are not is, again, I can see in this image that we're starting to see the coccyx down here. Um, and this tells me right away that we are uh, foreshortened. Um, the fifth sacral segment is actually demonstrated above the pubic symphysis down here. So therefore, we have an insufficient central ray angulation. In order to correct this, we have to increase the central ray. So this is a repeat all day. And um, you just need to determine whether you need that 30 or 35, or you might need a little bit more, um, just depending on the um, patient body habitus. So let's move on to the AP oblique projections for the SI joints. Image analysis guidelines state that the ilium and sacrum should be demonstrated without superimposition. The SI joint should be demonstrated open. The long axis of the SI joint should be aligned with the long axis of the collimated field. The SI joint of interest should be demonstrated at the center of the exposure field. The SI joint, the sacral ala, uh, <laughs> and ilium are included within the exposure field. I have included again the image analysis guidelines we just spoke about. So we know that um, to obtain a AP oblique projection of the I, uh, SI joints, the patient uh, should be rotated towards the unaffected side until the mid-coronal plane is at a 25 to 30 degree angle with the IR. However, if um, the patient is rotated less than that 25 to 30 degrees with the IR. The resulting AP SI joint projection um, will be demonstrated as closed with in reference to the SI joint. The iliac tuberosity will be demonstrated medial to the lateral wing. The ilium demonstrated decrease lateral medial for shortening and the lateral sacrum will be seen without ilium superimposition. So when looking at this image, our SI joint is definitely closed. Um, you can also see that there is some foreshortening here. So um, keep this in mind as we get, get on to our um, practice analysis. Now in a image with 
excessive pelvic obliquity where the pelvis is actually rotated more than that 25 to 30 degrees with the IR. Um, the resulting AP oblique SI joint projection will be will demonstrate a closed SI joint again. The ilium will uh, the ilium with increased lateral medial foreshortening, and the ilium will superimpose over the lateral sacral uh, ala and lateral sacrum. So you can see, we don't even see the joint here. Um, typically, we tend to over-rotate, then under-rotate. Um, but, and this would be, you know, demonstrating uh, excessive uh, rotation. Let's take a look at a couple practice analysis of the AP oblique SI joints. In this projection, we can see that the SI joint is first closed. The ilium is demonstrated with increased lateral medial foreshortening, and the ilium superimposes over the lateral sacral ala and the lateral sacrum. The pelvis here is actually over rotated. That is why your joint is closed. We need to decrease that obliquity. Um, to that 25 to 30 degree in order to correct this um, uh, image. In the second practice analysis, we actually have the opposite. Um, SI joint is, will be demonstrated as closed. The iliac tuberosity um, is medial to the lateral ala. The ilium is demonstrated de with uh, demonstrates decreased lateral medial foreshortening and the lateral sacrum is not superimposed by the ilium. In this case, the patient was under rotated. In order to correct this, we need to increase the obliquity to that 25 to 30 degree angulation, <clears throat> patient angulation, to uh, attain the appropriate projection. This concludes our analysis of the SI joints. If there are any questions, concerns, or needs, please feel free to email me, or we can talk about it at clinic, or, um, or even if I am in office on Fridays. Thank you for participating.